I owe my last question an apology. I shouldn't have I shouldn't have been such a wise guy with the last answer I gave. Anyway, thanks for being here. And uh, most of you have been here the whole room. Uh, I really do think, not me, but I think we, the country, has put a different face on where we've been and where we're going. And I feel good about it. I feel, you know, one of the things that I think understandably there was a good deal of skepticism about would the G7 sign on and, and give America back its sort of leadership role. I think it did. It wasn't me, but they're glad America's back. They're glad America's back and they acted that way. And then when we went to NATO, I think it was the same thing. We had really good meetings there and real response, as well as the EU. I didn't get one single person, not one of the world leaders, said doing anything other than thank me for arranging a meeting with Putin. Mr. President, did you talk with uh, President Putin about the Iran nuclear deal? Did you yes. Make, find a way? What, what, what did you discuss, and did you find a way to make it? It was about how we would jointly work, and I, I'm not going to discuss what we discussed. We have an agreement to work on a major arms control agreement. I started working on arms control agreements back all the way during the Cold War. If we could do one in the Cold War, why couldn't we do one now? We'll see. We will see whether or not it happens. There, 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 there's a value to being realistic and put on an optimistic front, an optimistic face. Look, you all said the same thing about the, uh, you know, what was going to happen when we had the first meeting of, of, of the, of the, uh, of the seven. Oh, Biden, they're not going to, they're not going to buy Biden stuff. They're, they're really not really. Any of you find that? Did that happen? Any of it? A little bit. Just a little sliver of it? I'm going to drive you all crazy. <laughs> because I know you want me to always put a negative thrust on things, particularly in public, and negotiate in public. I don't have to trust somebody. We didn't have to trust somebody to get start to. Russia is in a very, very difficult spot. They are being squeezed by China. They want desperately to remain a major power. You all are writing about, not illegitimately, Biden already gave Putin what he wants, legitimacy, standing on the world stage of the president of the United States. They desperately want to have be relevant. They have, and they don't want to be known as, as some critics have pointed and said, you know, the upper boulder with nuclear weapons. It matters. And I found it matters to almost every world leader, no matter where they're from, how they're perceived, they're standing in the world. It matters to them. It matters to them in terms of their support at home as well. A lot's going on. I don't know about you, I never anticipated notwithstanding no matter how persuasive President Trump was, that we'd have people attacking and breaking down the doors of the United States Capitol. I didn't think that would happen. I didn't think it's, I'd see that in my lifetime. But it's reinforced what I've always known and what I got taught by my political science professors and by the senior members of the Senate that I admired when I got here that every generation has to reestablish the basis in this fight for democracy. I mean, for real. Literally have to do it. And I've never seen, including during, since the Civil War, such an outward assault on voting rights. I mean, just a flat assault. As long as I'm president, we are going to stick to the notion that we're open, accountable, and transparent. And I think that's an important message to send the world. Thank you all for Thank you, Mr. President. Come back and see us on the plane.